Since ancient times, humans have eagerly sought out the comforts of soaking and bathing in hot water. The first iteration of hot tubs for bathing, or at least the first iteration of the hot tub that is known about today, are the ancient spa tubs in the town of Therma in Icaria, Greece, which utilized an aqueduct to draw its hot waters from the natural hot springs in the area. This made the spas in Therma an extremely popular destination for hydrotherapy at the time. However, unbeknownst to the bathers of 4th century BC ancient Greece, the waters of these saline hot mineral springs on the island of Icaria contained very high levels of the radioactive isotope radon, containing more than tenfold the normal amount of radon found in most hot springs, and are some of the most naturally radioactive hot springs in the entire world. And thus, it is believed that the hot water of these springs is not only warm by geothermal heat, but rather is also superheated by the radioactive material within the waters. Interestingly, however, the health benefits of these springs have been lauded by locals for centuries, and some of these hot springs are still available to bathe in to this day. I attempted to look into whether the amount of radon contained in the water is harmful for short-term exposure, but was met with some intimidating radiochemistry equations using units of measurement I'd never seen before that were way beyond my comprehension abilities, so I guess I'll just leave it at radon does emit some amount of gamma radiation, which is generally harmful to humans. Of course, the next notable iteration of hot tubs was the famous Roman baths, which utilized their superior understanding of engineering to construct early boilers to heat the pools within the buildings. However, the first iteration of what would become the modern hot tub was created in the early 700s AD when the first Japanese onsen was opened, which roughly translates to hot springs and the bathing facilities accompanying them. Much like the Greeks, the Japanese harnessed the naturally heated hot springs water to fill their baths. One of the types of bathing tubs used by these onsen was the ofuro tub, which is a style of square tub with high sides that bears a strong resemblance to the design of modern hot tubs. Some early iterations of modern hot tubs began to make an appearance in the United States in the late 1940s. However, the first true modern hot tub was introduced in 1968 when the Jacuzzi Brothers brought their first standalone hot tub featuring aerated pumps to the market. And while later iterations of those standalone hot tubs would make improvements to the design, the general concept remains largely the same to the present day, and they remain popular in both the traditional communal hot tub settings at hotels and spas, and are also popular for private residential use as well, having become a regular fixture in many homes in the United States. In mid-October of 1996, in the quaint town of Christiansburg, Virginia, doctors at one local hospital noticed an abnormal spike in the number of cases of bacterial pneumonia patients entering their care, as the number of patients far exceeded the expected baseline number of predicted cases that they would normally see at that time of year. One nurse at the facility had a hunch that perhaps the influx of bacterial pneumonia patients at the hospital was not a unique phenomenon to just their facility, and so the nurse contacted the New River Health District, who oversaw the hospitals in the area, to see if any of the other medical facilities under their banner had similarly seen a sharp spike in cases of bacterial pneumonia. This nurse's hunch would turn out to be correct as two other Christiansburg medical facilities had also seen a significant increase in cases of bacterial pneumonia as well. This finding set off alarm bells for New River Health District officials who contacted the Virginia Department of Health for a consultation on how to further proceed as their findings thus far pointed towards a potential epidemic. After consulting with the Virginia Department of Health, the New River Health District Director ordered that all patients that had been admitted with bacterial pneumonia between October 8th through the 14th be further tested to determine the etiology of the pneumonia they suffered with. The results of this extended testing came back on October 24th and confirmed what many officials had feared, as five of the tests had returned as positive for Legionella bacteria 
which is the cause of what is commonly known as Legionnaire's disease. Despite its name sounding like a disease that ravaged the ranks of the ancient Romans, Legionnaire's disease actually acquired its name after its discovery following a mass outbreak in July of 1976 at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at an American Legion convention that was being hosted there. Legionnaire's disease is primarily transmitted through inhalation of water vapors that contain the Legionella bacteria, which then develops into a particularly severe bacterial pneumonia as it further infects its human host. In the case of the American Legion Conference, the source of the infection that ultimately killed 29 of the 182 infected people was traced to the building's water tower, which had misted the interior of the building with the bacteria through its ventilation system as a result of particularly hot weather during the convention. Upon learning of the presence of Legionella bacteria at the three Christiansburg medical facilities, health officials continued to closely monitor the patients that were still hospitalized, and for those that had been already discharged, they were brought back to the hospitals for further testing which subsequently saw the number of positive cases of Legionnaire's disease rise to 15. The next step for officials was to trace the point of origin of the outbreak, a tedious and often slow process that can take months, as a common denominator between the victim's whereabouts during that time frame had to be established before officials could determine the source of the Legionella bacteria. Over the following few days, health officials set about thoroughly interviewing the victims about their whereabouts over the previous few weeks, and completed interviews with 14 of the 15 victims that had tested positive for the presence of Legionella bacteria, as unfortunately, one of them had already died from complications as a result of his infection before they had a chance to interview him about his whereabouts. In a stroke of fortuitous happenstance, however, within two days, health officials believed they had found the common thread that linked the victims together. Of the 14 people they had interviewed, 13 of them had recalled spending time at a local Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse store and had all spent at least a minute or two perusing the hot tubs on display within the store. Following this discovery, health officials rushed to the Lowe's location to test the hot tubs on display in the store for the presence of Legionella bacteria. Health officials described the employees of the Lowe's store as extremely cooperative with their investigation, and along with testing the two models on display at the store, employees further informed investigators that one of the hot tubs that had been on display during the onset of the outbreak had since been disassembled and purchased by one of the employees working there. The health officials were then led to the employee's home and tested their newly purchased tub for Legionella contamination as well. On November 14th, the Center for Disease Control and the New River Health District reported the findings into their investigation into the source of the outbreak. Neither of the two hot tubs that were on display at the Lowe's at the time of the visit by health department officials were found to have any Legionella bacteria present. However, they did find Legionella bacteria present in the filter of the hot tub that had been disassembled and sold to the employee that was on display in late September to early October. At the time of the public release of this report, on November 14, 1996, only two victims remained hospitalized. Following the public release of the New River Health District's findings, Lowe's found itself in the crosshairs of the public's outrage and in response, drained all display hot tubs, not only in the Christiansburg store location, but in all their store locations nationwide. Furthermore, this incident not only spurred Lowe's to drain their display tubs, but essentially brought an end to the days of water-filled display hot tubs, as most other hot tub retailers did not want to risk the possibility of another similar outbreak and drain their display tubs as well which has since become an industry standard. In the weeks following, one of the two remaining hospitalized victims was ultimately unable to make a recovery from the illness and died, bringing the final fatality count of the outbreak to two people killed. In February of 1997, a lawsuit was filed against Lowe's by one of the surviving victims of the outbreak, 
a man named John Allen Kirk that alleged that Lowe's managers knew or should have known of the dangers posed by the display hot tubs as they were found not to contain the correct level of chemicals and further failed to maintain the correct water temperature to ensure that Legionella bacterial growth did not fester within them. Seeking $700,000 in damages, the lawsuit further stated that not only were the Lowe's managers aware of the risk posed by the hot tubs, but they were also recklessly negligent as they did nothing to warn the public of the dangers posed by them either. Much like the ensuing lawsuit in my video about the incident at Homestead Crater, I can't find any details about the outcome of this lawsuit online, so I can only presume that a confidential out-of-court settlement was likely reached between Lowe's and Mr. Kirk. Thank you all for watching.